today we will talk about Jorge. <laughs> Jorge is a millennial. He is one of us. And he is about to graduate from university and join the FERC course. But he has slightly, or some people say, it, huge differences in expectations, values, and priorities around work. And he is actually very worried about the stereotypes that other generations have about millennials and himself may affect his career. So Jorge, he, Jorge doesn't want a routine, boring job. He doesn't want to miss his kid's soccer practice. He wants a job that continuously challenges him, presents new learning opportunities, and one that lets him balance his work and life, have a schedule that's flexible to him. But he's worried that he may get stereotyped as lazy. Jorge got the best education that has ever been available to humanity so far. He adapts very quickly to new situations. He thrives in rapidly changing environments. He does not shy away from taking initiative. And he's not shy away, he doesn't shy away to jump on new opportunities when he finds a new job or a new organization. But he's worried that he might get stereotyped as disloyal. And Jorge is also born as a native technology user. He's very quick at adapting new technologies. He's a very avid social network user. He blogs, he posts his thoughts on Facebook, he shares photographs on Instagram, and even sometimes he shares his selfies. <laughs> <laughs> and this actually makes him a great visual thinker, and he is like super efficient in info processing technology and information compared to previous generations. But he's worried that he might get labeled and stereotyped as narcissistic. So going into the workforce, Jorge is very worried. He doesn't know what to do. And many of us here, we are all millennials. We are about to graduate. Many, I believe many of us share the same concerns. And luckily, we are here today to talk to you about what are the common stereotypes why the other generations have those thoughts about us and how we can use strategic communication to tackle these challenges and how we can thrive. And the first one, as I mentioned, the stereotype is around laziness and Krista will talk to you about that. Thank you. When I wander into the kitchen in the morning, at least one morning a week, this is the sight that greets me. My roommate, Jason, is not Tom Cruise, but he will be wearing a button-up shirt, sometimes a tie, and definitely no pants. <laughs> Jason is a millennial, and he works at Google, and he flat out refuses to get to work before 11 a.m. As a result, if someone schedules a morning meeting, Jason will participate via a Google Hangout so he can engage in the meeting and have the added benefit of no pants required. <laughs> it's practices like this, such as getting in late, that have led to the stereotype that millennials are lazy. Now we know this simply isn't true. We all worked really hard to get here. But millennials do demand a certain flexibility in the workplace. For example, millennials resist specialization for fear it will lock us into an inflexible career track. We also tend to define career success in terms of personal fulfillment instead of climbing some corporate ladder. Now, a lot of corporations are still dealing with how to incorporate these into the corporate structure. But I'm going to give you some techniques so that you can combat this stereotype while still maintaining the flexibility that a lot of, a, a lot of us want. So first, if you're lucky enough to be able to have a flexible work schedule, it's important to clearly communicate those hours with your supervisor and your colleagues. This shows that it wasn't just that you missed your alarm this morning and are rolling in late. You made a conscious decision that this is the lifestyle that's important to you. When you are at work, it's important to have face-to-face um, -face contact so that you're not always that face on the computer screen or the, the text through the phone. If your supervisor is hesitant, to allow you to work uh, flexible hours, consider that maybe they're uncomfortable with or unfamiliar with the technology 
that allows these flexible work hours to be possible. It may benefit you to um, help your boss become more comfortable with this technology. And finally, find common ground. It turns out that boomers and millennials are actually very well aligned in our workplace preferences and career goals. So you probably have more in common with your supervisor than you think. So now that your boss no longer thinks that you're a lazy bum, uh, let's deal with the issue of millennials not being loyal to the workplace. So as Chris just said, it's important for millennials to seek out mentorship and to find allies among older generations. But this can be difficult if your supervisor perceives you as disloyal or doesn't think that you'll be around for very long. And so you see, older generations tend to see millennials as being like hummingbirds. We flit around from job to job, experience to experience, without staying in one place for long enough before moving on to the next exciting opportunity. So I'm gonna show you three different strategies to cope with this stereotype and to beat the hummingbird stereotype so you can receive the mentorship and build the allies that you need. The first one of those is simply to communicate what will make you loyal. As we've heard, our generation often values things differently than the older generations. We tend to value job flexibility over a little bit more salary. We value challenges and new experiences over job titles. And these sorts of things might not be what your supervisor expects. And so you need to cl clearly communicate these values and show them that you can be loyal, perhaps just to different things. So let's say you fail to communicate or convince them that you can be loyal. In that case, you need to at least show them that you can be valuable. And the easiest and simplest way to do that is simply to provide your value now. Focus on what you can do immediately, the short-term benefits that you can have to the company. It's just important that you do that in such a way that doesn't limit your long-term potential for growth. Finally, if all else fails, it may be best to simply accept your supposed disloyalty. Embrace it. Say, reframe it. Show them that you are adaptable and that you thrive in changing environments. All right. So we've shown you how you can beat the stereotypes of disloyalty and laziness. So now let's take a look at how you can deal with the challenges that, are, um, that associate our generation with technology. Next, I'd like to discuss another stereotype people have about millenniums. That is our interaction with technology. Can you believe that? 64% of public actually believe that there's a huge gap between millenniums and elder generation in their way of interaction with technology. The gap is even bigger than their differences in moral values, attitudes towards races and ethnicities, and the importance of family. Well, millennium generation is a generation of digital native. When we talk about millennials, people just immediately think of social networks, photo sharing, cell phones, and internet. It is true, social networks are the building blocks of social interaction of generation, uh, for millennium generation. Among 2013 Facebook users, millennials on average have 250 friends, while in contrast, this number for the elder boomers was just 50. Millenniums also led the way on photo, photo sharing, so much that Oxford word of year in 2013 was selfie. Millenniums are also more likely than any other generation to say that it is okay to use cell phone in class, in lecture, or at the dining table and people criticize millenniums all the time that we spend so much time on internet and we read far fewer books. Whenever there is a readily available answer there, millenniums just lack the motivation to seek for a more nuanced one. So, does that mean millenniums can 
just accept all the blames and criticisms. No, because the key of communication is in understanding where your audience are from and communicating the, advantage, communicating the message in their needs. Are we using internet too much frequently? Yes, but our current fa fast-paced business arena requires this kind of immediacy, including the abilities to retrieve and process the information far more quickly than our previous generation. And millenniums have developed this kind of unique capabilities that help us to contrive and process information as visual thinkers. Do we share too much? Maybe. But we are creating the online content. 59% of teams have their blogs and create online contents. Millennium's generation are just showing an earlier preference for using technology to capture, synthesize, and express their thoughts, opinions, and experiences. Are we too narcissistic? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> but remember, more and more companies are using the Millennium's proclivities to their advantage. They are encouraging the new hires to actively engage in internal social networks. They see millennials as co-developers in product marketing and designing. And more and more millennium consumers are actively engaged and participate in the creation of consumer goods. So as long as we understand where our unique values are, we are able to convert our disadvantages to our advantages. And Sach Sach King is going to give you the conclusion for how to leverage the communication to beat people's stereotypes of millennials. So coming back to Jorge, so the sad news is these stereotypes do exist. They are far more common than we would like them to be. But the good news is we can tackle them. Because the previous generations, they don't want us to fail. I mean, they made us. They were our parents, they were our teachers, they were our mentors. They want us to succeed. It's just that they grew up in a different world. They have different values, priorities, and expectations. And using strategic communication can easily tackle those challenges. This will make sure that we not only survive the workplace, but also thrive there and also build stronger relationships with them. This is a very limited time to tackle all those challenges and we tried to mention the top three most common ones and how you can challenge them and how you can tackle them. But I'm sure many of you have questions in this heated topic which is very important for us going forward. <laughs>